my sorrow at present is at the fact that I'm, I'm very saddened, I'm broken, I'm bereft with what's going on in Israel. And for me, it's the hostages, like the hostages, okay? Especially the women, because me, rape, I just have a thing about rape, okay? I just like being ravaged, just taken in Jefela, and you can't, and it's this grunting man that's sweaty, and he's disgusting, he's got halitosis, I can't deal. And I'm just imagining what um, Israeli women must be going through in this captivity. As some of them are even being killed, like, it's just so bad. And with that situation where there's nothing you can do until your government uh, gets you out or until some miracle from on high happens, you just gotta have to wait and basically ride the storm out. So my heart is, is really bereaved and saddened by what's going on over there. But at the same time, in and of myself, I'm a hostage. In and of myself, I've been forgotten. In and of myself, I have got grum, grum, grum what's, what's this grubby hands trying to grope me, touch me, have sex with me by force. In and of myself, I'm facing death. And my country has not come up with any reliable effort to rescue me neither has any other land that is allied with my country try to rescue me i have cried and cried and cried and people are aware that i have been kidnapped it, it essentially the tantamount of it and yet nothing is happening and so my hard cry for the hostages is almost like my own plight where you don't know when you're gonna get out and if you're gonna get out um and what what, what is what, what is going to what is going to become of you when you get out on the other side just like those kids that were you know having a party or whatever at that uh music festival they had lives and they were young and they were looking forward to futures and they didn't have post-traumatic stress but once you get out of hamas captivity what they did to you in that space even if you survive you will never be the same again and i know for a fact that if i were to get out of this which i've been hoping on the lord for i'll never be the same again but before everything happened i was this bright-eyed and bushy-tailed young woman coy looking forward to a future and very positive with my outlook on life and now everything is is so flipped upside down everything is so sad and everything is so untrustworthy in the world around me that i, I trust i will never be the same again never again will i be able to look at a man normally and laugh and have a conversation with him without feeling like he's trying to rape me never again am i going to trust women when I talk to them to not hand me over to perverted men. Never again am I ever going to trust anybody to basically keep me safe if at all I am in a weak position. In other words, if I don't have money, are you still going to love me? If I don't have, you know, uh, everything that I used to have, my own house, my own, like, yeah, there is no way that even if I were to get my own apartment, even if I were to get my own plan, basically my independence to regain it, I will always be looking over my shoulder fearful like no man's business of losing anything lest i should find myself in a hostage situation again because of a lack of trust of the environment around me to intervene on time and get me out of the situation right so that that whole situation that whole hostage situation going on in israel and with um the israeli military working like no man's business to try and free hostages while hamas is like if you shall our ecosystem we're going to kill your hostages one by one. Uh, or they say that before you do any kind of thing, you need to give us advance notice of this many hours so we can have a nice little opportunity to run away. Or we're going to kill your hostages. Like they're threatening human lives. And I'm looking at God and I'm like, Father, when people are busy using me, us, human beings, as a means to negotiate to get away with murder, where is our coverage and our protection? Where, where, where is our shielding that are already in the hands of Hamas? Those of us who are already kidnapped. Those of us that are living in fear, in the bowels of hell, like Eric Stuckelberg likes saying. For 24 hours a day, you are facing this dangerous situation 24 hours a day. You are scared. You don't even have time for the military to be strategizing over how they're going to set you free because you wish they were there in that environment, breaking down the doors and setting you free. You feel like you could not survive. Every day that comes could be the last one for you. So every day is literally one day too late to rescue a hostage. And I'm looking at God and I'm like, Father, like, when am I going to get out of this? Are they really going to be set free? I'm feeling endangered every single day. Is this ever going to end when there are people that can easily just grab a woman by the hair and shove her in a car? When people can just like like parade a dead body in the middle of the street while whipping it with branches, when they can do that, how safe am I? Am I just going to be one of those people that are culled like an animal? Am I going to be like one of those people that just die in Jephala just like that after striving for so long? And while all of this is happening, the, 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 what is this? The, the U.S. is trying to interview, uh, what is this? Israel in its response 
to the situation currently happening with but like what about the civilians of uh what do you call this what about the civilians of of of, of uh, palestine what about the civilians of, of of that gaza strip what about this like you are wasting time the ground evasion is a invasion is the best thing the best way that's the, 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 the israel can first of all target to hamas directly do you understand what i'm saying get to those underground tunnels but also the best shot that the hostages have a ground invasion is the best shot that those hostages have because airstrikes might even kill their own hostages by mistake because they don't know where they're at and here it is that the u.s is trying to not the u.s the u.s a u.n everybody is trying to get israel to be a little bit more diplomatic about it what are they supposed to do not care i mean do you know that israel once set free one thousand hamas prisoners or islamic prisoners of sorts for one israeli soldier one one israeli soldier when your enemy is aware of how much you value human life to a point where they will literally give you a thousand of their people for one of you how under heaven are you still trying to stay their hands from doing what they need to do in order to fight in this war the church of the living god is getting to a point where we're being exasperated we're being exhausted do you understand we are being worn out to a point of irre irrecoverability it's like irreparably are we being drained we are being flat ironed do you understand steamrolled and the thing that is steamrolling me personally is america it is the beast system you uh, the u.s with europe is working tirelessly right now to censor smother do all manner and kinds of evil things against christian or truth channels across the world in order to proliferate a particular narrative and they're going to a point of impoverishing people who live in already very impoverished countries like the u.s will not let me breathe so what makes you think that the u.s is going to allow even for the ground invasion in order to rescue me because they look proper that what makes you think that america is going to be prepared that people like me be set free because if america does not stand for christians anywhere else in the world they definitely don't stand for israel they have dropped the ball they have forgotten their first love they have absolutely neglected the lord they are naive they are lukewarm and they are seeker sensitive and they're trying to look good they're trying to stay looking moral but underhandedly they're doing some pretty shoddy things I am frustrated out of my mind and the to myself as to how I'm going to get out of my country's insanity. And America is making sure that they don't care. Why? Because they've got a bigger mission to silence the church. America is actively on a mission to smother the church. They are censoring the voice of Jesus Christ. In the, they're censoring the voice of John the Baptist in the wilderness that is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ coming up. They are actively censoring Christian voices across the world using their platforms youtube their platforms facebook they are silencing us and yet they claim to stand with israel you cannot stand with israel if you don't stand with the church and vice versa because we are one and the same thing we come from the same root and we will ultimately all be brothers and sisters in eternity there is neither jew nor gentile all are one in christ that's what's good we are of the same family whether or not non-messianic jews that have not embraced their messiah believe it they will ultimately get to a point where they believe it so you cannot stand you cannot stand with israel and then not with christianity and vice versa so this hypocrite nation that is america that is sitting on my chest making sure i can't go anywhere it's only a matter of time since you already manifested demons against me so fast before you manifest against israel i am literally looking forward to a future in the near one nochal where just like yair lapid we're going to be dealing with a Biden that's trying to get somehow reach a middle ground. How I, I dare Joe Biden to go back to 9-11 and reach a middle ground with Osama bin Laden. I dare him. I dare him. I'm buying your rich middle ground, no Gaddafi. America, do that. You never can, can you? Go and reach a middle ground with Yasser, Ara, with Yasser of Arafat. That's what's good. You can't reach middle ground. There are certain people you don't reach a middle ground with. And Hamas cannot be reached a middle ground with. And Palestinians have got well i'm totally for the humanitarian corridor and this flight to the is it north or south of israel in order for them to do the ground invasion the united nations since they claim to be for israel since they claim to uh abhor and detest what 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 hamas did since america also claims to basically stand like no man's business for israel humanitarian agencies and global bodies 
have a responsibility to enable the flight of those Palestinians because it's like sending military aid. It's like sending warships to Israel, just like America currently is doing that. It's like sending uh, weaponry to the Ukraine because you don't agree with what's going on with Russia. How about instead of sending a warship or even a, what, is, what do you call this thing? Um, uh, warships or even um, arsenal. How about you, 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 you somehow find a ferry boat to get those however many Palestinians out of using various borders around various countries make deals with them to give them asylum for however long it will take for that situation to be eradicated help to get them out that's that would be the reason instead of looking at israel on some no guys how are they supposed to do this quickly they what must they do go and have lunch with hamas and tell and, and so that they don't have to deal with uh, what is the civilians what in the world else are they supposed to do what i'm trying to get at right now is that when christians fight for themselves or jews the world has a bone to pick with what it is that we're doing because you hate god earth you hate god and so you're always irrational in how you respond to us and you're also hypocrites because whenever it happens to you the same thing that happens to us all of a sudden everybody's in a brawl all of a sudden everybody is in a raucous all of a sudden everybody gotta be thrown away because of the fact that somebody hurt you but when it happens to a christian you gotta first talk for 10 hours while hostages are writhing and reeling before any real ground offensive can be taken on board the faster israel does this thing the, the better so the un has a responsibility to avail literally broker some kind of ability for all of those um guardians to like put tents pitch tents whatever you need to do like whatever humanitarian aid that you can get into gaza as quickly as possible in the northern part of gaza is it the southern i stand corrected get that in there if egypt won't take them help them get cramped up in one big fat chunky tent so that they can be fed and be kept okay until further notice since israel is humanitarian enough since it is humane enough to give them warnings before they shell them before they shoot them before they do a ground invasion they will let them know even to move from those tents if they now have to go further inland into um the gaza strip but if not why, why then are you busy nya, 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 from the rooftops talking like when a hostage is in a hostage situation they don't have time for the un to complain that this is looking a little bit it's gonna cause a humanitarian crisis what must they do negotiate with osama bin laden because that would be the tantamount of that it would be the proper equivalent of that and uh, so that the hypocrisy against israel in its response and the hypocrisy against christianity in its response to persecution and attack is for me evidence of the fact that we're at the very end already the saints of the living god are being worn out and the only help that we uh, that we ask for are the only places we can go to knock on doors for assistance are places that have already signed deals with the devil they're duplicitous they've got double standards they've got double minds they have got agendas underneath their pillows they are literally sitting on an ulterior motive and when they help us they are helping us with one eye covered like a pirate because they are thoroughly stealing while they are claiming to be giving america is stealing while it is claiming to be giving it is that basic it, it is it is in no position to stand with israel because it is too duplicitous to keep strong for israel to stand with its guns and that's the reason why I call, um, ezekiel 38 and 39 or from 37 all the way to 39 that's the reason why israel ain't got nobody because everybody in the world is so sinful everybody in the world has so abandoned the cause of god almighty never mind israel but god almighty because really at the heart of israeli persecution is the core of israeli creation it is god himself people are coming against god they are coming against the almighty it is hatred of god that is causing this insanity the, the the prince of the power of the air or the god of this world that is the devil has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they can do an abominable thing an abominable thing so the attack on israel is really an attack on god but they don't know that why because they're, they're worshiping demons they're worshiping entities fallen angels and they're calling them god and so when then you are a, a a devil worshiper in the form of some fallen entity that you call allah or whatever you of course are going to come up against the god of the universe that you've always had a bone to pick with ever since he kicked you out of heaven and so you're gonna go against whoever he has given favor to whoever he has gladly gazed upon as the devil in totality that would be earth's citizens because they all have a shot at heaven but it is also the nation that god originally from the very get-go chose and it's israel so christian persecution is really global response to demonic possession because of the fact that it is targeting those that still have a shot at a heaven that the devil lost so given global hatred of god due to global demonic possession 
where do we have to go those of us who have alleged ourselves to god indeed to the one true god the one who is not an idol but the actual creator there's nowhere to go there is absolutely nowhere to go for us the day is going to arrive when is israel has no one and america is has already displayed that it's well on its way to abandoning israel well on its way by simply doing what it's doing to me by simply even so much as huffing out of its mouth a two-stage solution they are well on its way in this compromised uh, total diversity inclusion and equity model of theirs of complete tolerance one day they're going to be shoving down that entire tolerance thing down israel's throat to say you must tolerate even the, the splitting of your land because the Atanagabi, America is absolutely besotted with tolerance. And so their adoration of tolerance is going to make them more force Israel to tolerate or else. So the day is going to come when Israel is scattered, not scattered. They can never really truly be scattered. They will be hiding in the mountains of Judea, but they're going to be protected by God directly from heaven. Because support for Israel is going to wane globally. And those who are truly born again are going to also be so violently persecuted that they're not going to be able to stand for Israel. As a Christian where I'm at right now. I can say I'm pro-Israel and even wave a flag of Israel everywhere I go, if at all I would go, I was going anywhere every single day. Those days are coming to a blistering end because to so much as carry an Israeli flag or to call yourself a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, I apologize for the speech lag, will get you beheaded. R flail an Israeli flag, profess Christianity. The day is going to arrive when that's going to win you murder. It's going to win you an assassination. It's going to win you an assassination. And the Lord says in his word that if they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. So God is not going to expect us in the tribulation to be brave. One minute. The Lord has never ever um, expected uh, Christians to um, suffer out in bravery, a situation that is fatal, right? Martyrdom is only martyrdom because they are trying to kill you, even though you're doing everything to stay alive. You hold into the name of Jesus all the way to the end, but you don't hand yourself over to the hangman's noose. You don't send yourself over to the uh, uh, the, the samurai's sword. You don't send yourself to the gallows. You tend to get captured and then sent to the gallows. So you're evangelizing on the street corner and then you get like kidnapped by a bunch of rebels. And then they take you to their premises and hang you. That is martyrdom. It is not martyrdom to literally go knocking on the door of the leader of ISIS and tell them, Jesus is Lord, you better stop what you're doing when you know that they can shoot you right there on the spot. It is a lack of, um, what do you call this thing? Response, it's, it's, it's an irresponsible act. It lacks uh, wisdom to do something of that nature. So given that the Lord in, in, implores us to be wise and not reckless with our lives, that if we get persecuted, ours is to flee. You don't just stand in front of a hail of bullets and expect that God is going to be proud of you when you enter into heaven for doing that. You try to escape, elude those bullets, and if they catch you, then you're a martyr. That's what's going on. Yeah, martyrs tend to die running. Martyrs tend to die hiding. Martyrs tend to get caught in bunkers where they hoped not to get caught. You don't just put yourself in harm's way. So the Lord is not going to expect us in an ecosystem where there is a decree in the land to kill anyone that professes Jesus and won't take the mark of the beast. The Lord is not going to expect us, therefore, in the tribulation to go out in the street and evangelize like David Lynn. David Lynn, of which I recently discovered, also got arrested in Ethiopia. Nonsense across the world. That's what's going on. Given that the Lord does not expect that of us, therefore, he has made sure in the tribulation that the gospel is spread largely through supernatural means. He raises up 144,000 and then he also uh, brings forward the two witnesses. And then there are the angel. There is the angel that flies overhead prior to the taking of the mark of the beast, warning people not to take the mark of the beast. Otherwise, they're going to be condemned for eternity. Evangelism is very underground in the tribulation and also supernatural. The 144,000 of which can also not be killed. And so therefore they're not in danger when they evangelize and those that do evangelize are um, Who do ultimately get put in harm's way and then they do die the two witnesses But they can't die before a certain date before that date everything that they try to do to kill them fails Right if the Lord does not expect you to put yourself in harm's way And there is such an increase of persecution across the world of Christians What they're doing then is essentially trying to send the whole entire body of Christ underground and if that's already starting to happen, if at all they're trying to force even an underground YouTube space, like, oh, YouTube, you are shadow banned all over the show. There's no way that you can grow a Christian channel. And they will target you so badly as a Christian, so badly, that even if you are doing a cooking channel, in my particular case, I've got a fitness channel, they have targeted even that because they are aware that I am a Christian. 
so anything to exsanguinate funds, finances out of my life. When a nation does that to Christians, what am I supposed to do? Well, 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 what's going to happen? When a nation does that to Christians, what are we all supposed to do? And when a nation does that to Christians and then it claims to stand with Israel, what are Americans supposed to think? And what is Israel also supposed to think? And what are Christians across the world supposed to think? I can stand for Israel on top of the rooftops as much as I want. But bottom line is, if America does not stand with me, it cannot possibly stand with Israel. So it's only a matter of time before it falls apart. I am not even lying right now. It is impossible for the US to be so badly persecuting of me as a persecuted Christian already in the world and successfully stand its ground for Israel. I have said this I don't know how many times to Americans. You need to stop alleging to your country and start alleging to God. Because the disquieting thing about belonging to a superpower, a global empire, a well-respected nation in the world, is that you will tend or you will have a propensity or be susceptible to the possibility of idolizing your very powerful country as opposed to God. And when you idolize a country, you might be tempted to be at enmity with anybody that speaks negatively about your country, including a Christian that has a reasonable bone to pick with your country for reasons that are biblically justifiable as to why she's so upset with them americans have got a prerogative to stand with the body of christ and not with america but unfortunately they're so patriotic a lot of them that they have gone on to build a golden calf out of that american flag and so having a golden calf they can't stand ill sentiment by anybody across the world about america and they also can't stand the prospect of their country falling apart except you are living in babylon as a convert to judaism as a proselyte as a proselytized jew you therefore have a responsibility to love the hebrews more even than you love babylonians that is what american christians should be like so they should be more in support of me and recognize that there is there ought to be solidarity for israel and other persecuted christians across the world and a slow but sure withdrawal like a junkie been taking off drugs from adoration for your own country patriotism is not problematic insofar as you are patriotic to a country that stands with the values of your god but the moment your country abandons the values of your god you ought to give yourself patriotism to no one but heaven love your land as much as you want insofar as your land loves god but if your land starts to forget about god you cannot forget about god's christians across the world that your country is persecuting that are raising your country's incendiary agenda america is not standing for christians and so it cannot possibly stand for israel meaning that it will ultimately either ditch israel or in and of itself be wiped out of existence until it cannot be there for israel because the lord will not deal or take in his stride the duplicity the duplicitousness or duplicity of america just it's double standards you don't get to gain accolades on your shoulder for protecting israel when one of my daughters in south africa is literally suffocating because you have done everything in your power to drain her ability to grow on social media she has been a spiritual warrior like no man's business for years fighting witchcraft in her country and all manner and kinds of persecution fighting her own family abandoning her fighting romans 10 judgments that's what's good where it is that from now on a man's not romans but um, matthew from now on a man's enemies will be members of their own households she has warred well she has fought well against darkness and was prospering to get somewhere in this war until one day she was frozen frozen in place unable to go nowhere unable to speak anything and unable even to evangelize unable to witness because america made an executive decision to silence and smother christians across the world because america made a decision that my child is going to stay stagnant i therefore will take my eyes off america you cannot imagine that you can serve one christian and then hate another we are one body many parts you cannot serve israel and not christians and vice versa it's impossible we are one thing so the u.s american citizens this is all i'm gonna say to you it's over for you as a country and if you want to maintain your standing with the god of the universe seek his wisdom as to how to deal with your apostate country because it will inevitably abandon israel unless america repents against christians across the world unless america repents against human rights of abuses across the world unless america repents from participating in the mutiny against earth's citizens in global censorship on their platforms across the board it cannot stand with israel it will be uprooted it.
If, however, America imagines that it can be as duplicitous as it currently is and left unchecked and so doing a thing as that, it's going to embarrass itself. It will inevitably embarrass itself where it will start first standing with Israel and then it will do what that random American animal with a perverted disposition that has been trying to marry me by force like he's Beetlejuice for crying out loud. Yeah, he will manifest demons. She, America, will manifest demons all up in Israel's grow. There is no way you can be in the presence, do you understand, of the Holy Spirit and not manifest demons if you're demon possessed and america right now is demon possessed you are so resentful and loathful of christians i can't stand like proper american uh, uh media television i am struggling to watch shows from america because they start out all right and then they introduce some filthy agenda five seasons into a show you've already gotten used to you cannot like ride out like it's dawson's creek back in the day an entire season uh, an entire like multiple multi-part season of a show without being lambasted in like season three four or five with the lgbtqia plus agenda or some other insensitive crazy little thing without taking into consideration that other people do not sign up for this i mean really if you're gonna do an lgbt blah 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 show let it be known from season one episode one that is that show but to show how stealthy and pernicious america is with this agenda it is that they start out first with good old-fashioned television viewing like you used to get back in the day and then they will bring it in once you're already hooked on a show into like season three or four they did it with good doctor good good doctor for the me was the was the one that threw me off a chair the most where it is that there was a dude in one of the latter seasons i think season three where some man was properly falling pregnant that's the us for you so i mean when a country is working so hard to hate the god that rose it up from the ground it can not stand with a country that god is protecting with all of its might you will be cut off you will be severed you will inevitably fall into the bandwagon so since america is falling apart in inducing into our food poison once we've already eaten three quarters of the meal why under heaven are american christians still alleging so much to america when your country has become so babylonian i don't understand it why am i sitting on 67 subscribers on a channel that three months ago was sitting on 47 subscribers why is that even happening why am I the shadow band? Why was such an important message am I not able to speak? Why must I keep on consuming content from American content creators while I can't even find any content creators from my own country? Because they're deliberately blocking Africans from even seeing each other. How is that even a thing? You cannot possibly stand for God's people when other of God's people you have imprisoned, you have held hostage certain of other people's of other of, of God's people while you have set free others however in front of cameras whatever it is that is done in in the shadows do you understand and conspicuously will always be highlighted on the rooftops if America is looking like the beast system right now that is that abusive of the global citizenship according to Daniel 7 it's the end it's the end it's the it's the season just before just before that's what's good the millennial reign of Jesus Christ if at all you are giving some people in the world a tribulation experience even before the tribulation starts on that day you are not a nation that has any business at all alleging itself with israel no neither and so inevitably america is going to turn its back on israel it's just so inevitable and like i said this is not a prophecy it's not a prophecy it's a speculation it is gathering data statistically or mathematically that inferences that gets to a conclusion a sound one at that that the probability of america sticking to its guns with israel right now is highly unlikely it is very low it is extremely low given that it is currently persecuting the world at large for loving jesus it is persecuting the world at large for loving jesus and jesus is the god of israel whether or not israel is has embraced that is irrelevant the fact is he is the god of israel and so if you persecute his christians in any capacity anywhere else in the world you might as well in and of yourself be iran you might as well in and of yourself be Lib lebanon you might as well in and of yourself be syria and libya in and of yourself you might as well be at enmity loggerheads be among the nations that are trying to heave away israel and that will be surely cut into pieces you are one and the same thing you might as well be the palestinian authority you are the exact same thing I am livid and I am upset and I'm out of my mind with irritation with the way my family is treating me and then I have to happen upon 67 plus subscribers I'm talking to 67 people are you freaking serious 67 people when I am this well researched 67 people when I am this anointed 67 people when I'm obviously this called 67 people that America has made sure are the only ones that will ever see my foot my content 
Because once you've already subscribed to a channel, then fine, they will recommend your stuff to them. But everybody else, dream on. Must I rely on word of mouth when 67 people, 67 people from a global citizenship of how many millions that are checking out YouTube every single day are the only ones that see my content? 67 in one of my channels with all of this work that I upload. And you seriously think that America is going to take care of Israel all the way up until this war is over? No, they're going to fall apart. Watch this space. They're going to fall apart. They're going to manifest demons just like the little beast from California that comes out of prison, pounced on me, try to rape me, try to marry me by force like he's Beetlejuice. Yeah, that little manifesting freak is going to make like his country. He, the, his country is going to make like him. And manifest entities in the presence of God's people. And God's people will be shocked out of their minds that they ever trusted you. Israel will get to a point where it is shocked out of its mind that it ever trusted America to hold on to it. Who is ultimately going to rescue Israel from the world at large, including a duplicitous America? God himself, God himself, himself is going to rescue Israel from a duplicitous America and from a global citizenship that's lost their minds because they are listening to the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world that has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So that they will believe the lie given that they've taken pleasure in their unrighteousness and not love the truth he will send them that strong delusion the strong delusion of which is a belief that it is possible to like a vampire exsanguinating blood out of a victim to exsanguinate christianity out of the earth we are the lifeblood the bible says life is in the blood and when a vampire drinks blood it exsanguinates life out of a person and so taking out christianity from the face of the earth is the tantamount of a vampire drinking blood and completely emptying the global elites have got a mission to freaking empty the world of true christianity those of us who are apparently allegedly intolerant and when you drain blood out of a body hi there buddy i'm sorry you are naive to imagine you're gonna get to live another day you cannot extinguish israel or exsanguinate israel for that is the apple of god's eye and the root origin and frankly the environment where he's going to be ruling and reigning from for a thousand years in jerusalem that's where he's going to be ruling for a thousand years on the mount of olives that's where he's going to land his feet causing an earthquake to crack in between that's what's good so you cannot make that land that of the palestinians or any of the islamic authorities because then where is christ gonna land his feet given that he's only landing his feet um in his holy land amidst his holy people to rescue them and to salvage them back to their land you cannot exsanguinate israel and you also similarly cannot exsanguinate the body of christ without killing the earth the body of christ is the lifeblood of the planet the scriptures in one or two thessalonians calls us the restrainer it is impossible for the whole earth to live without christianity or even judaism that has rejected its messiah because it will ultimately embrace its messiah since we were born from judaism you cannot get rid of judaism for the lord has come to fulfill the law and not to abolish it so the torah will always be a thing and you also cannot abolish the bible you cannot abolish the word of god you cannot abolish these two religions it is impossible but your attempt globally to do such a thing as that is going to cause you a near-death experience as the planet do you understand it's going to put you on a deathbed it's going to put you in a coma it is going to render you catatonic and you will for a season literally think you can worship a mere mortal that breathes like you and bleeds like you understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life that's what the bible says yet the antichrist is going to have a mortal wound therefore blood that is healed he will be bleedable if you prick him he will be able to bleed that means he cannot give eternal life that means he has an expiry date and yet there are going to be a global citizenship of people that are going to take his mark on the forehead and on the right hand or the right hand and a liege to him who will be doing miracles signs and wonders and even though he can get shot and killed the guy will thoroughly be your god and so you will be flatlining literally in a coma in dire need of defibrillation as the earth and there will only be one person able to save you from extinction complete annihilation so even their agenda 2030 their attempts at eradicating issues concerning climate change or whatever might be earth's potential extinction level events yeah all of these guys coming up with all different kinds of strategies to fix all of these things ain't gonna prosper to do anything of that nature the only thing that is going to save the earth is god saving jerusalem 
and therefore the rest of you. The only thing that is going to save the earth from death is God saving the Christians that you have martyred, the Christians that you have lain waste by taking them into heaven, making them watch the Hunger Games. The only way is when the Lord returns upon gathering his elect from the four corners of the earth to meet him in the sky and then come back down again those who were still alive at the very end of the tribulation while the rest of us will come with him on white horses yeah that is us returning back to an earth you tried to literally exterminate us out of there will have been a whole drive to drain out the lifeblood of the earth in the tribulation where people are going to hand family members that have given their lives over to christ over to be beheaded do you understand because there is literally a vampiric activity on the earth trying to exsanguinate blood out of a victim that they hope is somehow going to keep on walking without blood in its bones. Without blood in its body. That's what's good. You cannot continue as a going concern, as the earth at large, as a planet that you know, the one that you've been born in, you were raised in it, you rode your bicycle and learned how to swim in it. You cannot keep it going without Christians, no matter how much you might love the devil, no matter how much you might love your seances, your ancestral worship, no matter how much you might like to inhale in Pepoyako, no matter how much you might do witchcraft from here to Timbuktu, you cannot create a wormhole that is going to suck in all of Christianity and then not expect the earth at large to implode. It is impossible for this earth to continue without Christians because it's been made for us. It is impossible for this world to exist without Jews because it's been made for us. That's what you must understand. It is our world. Go and read Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundant peace. We are the ones that are going to ultimately rule and reign all up in this monster for 1,000 years with Jesus Christ. And then there's going to be an attempted coup again to take us over at the end of that 1,000 years. And that's going to cause God to extingu extinguish this earth altogether. Just throw it away. It is going to flee away from his face and there will be no footing for anybody to lay their feet ground on the ground once the earth has been taken away. Because you're so evil as the human race that the moment the devil is taken out for all of five seconds, you already hook up a second volume 2.0 Armageddon against them. Another Gog Magog battle is going to happen at the very end of the tribulation where human beings cannot catch a hint that when you've got like a whole living, thriving, a physical body that you can touch, albeit it not having blood, for he's already been taken over and transcended into a heavenly body. Albeit having a God that's actually physically ruling and reigning in Jerusalem, you're still going to try and take over the world. You're still going to try and take over the world. You will still rebel against the Lord. That is how depraved the human race is. And so God is then on that day going to take the whole earth away and throw it away. And then give us a new earth and a new heaven where there will be no one who can rebel anymore. No one who can actually think they can rise up against the potter as the pottery and say, what have you done? It's not going to happen ever again. But before then, there will be all manner and kinds of military forces raised up by the devil deceived like no man's business because it is a deception who wants to go to hell no one no one goes to hell gladly and willingly people go there because they think one it doesn't exist or two they're absolved from it or three they've got power over it people don't just go to hell nobody who chooses to be a devil worshiper does so understanding their eventuality they thoroughly think nothing happens they're nihilistic or atheistic they think it's just empty void not ash when you pass away nothing goes on nothing happens it is neither alive nor dead it is just merely non-existent anymore you go back to being exactly what you were prior prior to what it is that you you were before your parents conceived you there are people who believe that like one i was reading some comment on youtube when some other woman was asking so do you really believe in heaven and this guy no not youtube it was cora cora right you know that 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 like cora you get my point the woman was asking so what happens when we die is there eternity is there heaven what's up and some like atheist responded on some the very same thing that happened before you were born is the same thing that happens when you die nothing it's just void it's empty except according to the scriptures the lord god almighty from eternity past literally knit us together in our mother's wombs he knew us he predestinated us he foreordained us before any single day of our lives ever came to pass the lord knew it full well meaning that we've always been in existence for we were always in the plan of god so you can't even imagine that a baby was never there prior to its conception because it never would have been conceived if the lord did not first plan its conception so we've existed even from before conception we did not exist since from eternity past at some point we were created but all things that have been created were created initially and then they manifested out over the ages and got born that's what's going on this alarm is making me crazy that's what's good mm. 
So for you to think that a God that can predestinate a person, foreordain them, foreknew them from before they were even conceived, were knit together in their mother's womb, called from before they were even knit in their mother's womb. If God can call a person from before the womb to be his prophet or his servant, what makes you think that he is going to allow a world to take over people like those in favor of people that have no regard for him, that are nihilistic, that are imaginative, that we all started with a big bang, that we came from like some primordial soup. How, what makes you think that the Lord is going to allow people who are so destructive, so destructive are they, that they now have even realized that we've caused a problem called climate change on the earth, that he's going to allow them to continue to run the show absent of worshiping him, it's naive. Absent of knowing and loving him, it is entirely naive. That's what's good. So those who are trying to extinguish me and those who are trying to extinguish Israel, you're naive, but your attempts are heartbreaking. Your attempts are causing a very hard life for a person that every single ounce of sorrow that you keep on slapping them with, God is tabulating all of those events and the wine press of his wrath is rising to a height. You know, when, when a teapot boils, steams, when, when you're boiling a pot of, um, of, of water on the stove and initially it, it, it starts to, you know, just bubble and then it starts to whistle and if you don't remove it off the stove, it will not, it will stop even whistling, but it'll start to bubble over and cause even the fire that's burning, the, the, the water in order for it to boil, to be extinguished. The fire to be extinguished because you did not remove that pot off on the stove on time. It gave you uh, multiple warnings. First it boiled and then it whistled and then it bubbled over and then it, it snuffed out the flame. So the flame that's causing God to boil over right now is the wickedness across the world all over the show. And so far God is boiling. He is boiling. He will start to whistle and then he will start to bo bo boil over and then he will snuff out the wicked. He will snuff them out by simply reaching him to that height. So every day that I am left in this position, every day that YouTube does this to my channels, every day that uh, America claims to stand with Israel and yet does this to some Christians across the world is every day that they are getting God to a point of whistling, bubbling over and then snuffing them out. As a nation, they will get to a point where they've been entirely eradicated off the face of the earth. God himself is the intervention when a global citizenship imagines that in their numbers, they're safe and they can therefore persecute those on the narrow road that leads to life that few people find. Or those, albeit still being on the broad road, are nonetheless ultimately chosen to inherit the narrow road israel you must understand the day is never going to arrive when we are entirely eradicated from the earth it cannot come to pass why because god created humanity for his own possession and those that have rejected him gotta leave they gotta get out of this earth those that are nihilistic those that imagine we started in primordial soup a big bang they gotta go because you don't want the earth you don't want if you don't want the god that created the earth for you to live in you don't get to live on his earth you don't get as pottery to stick around in the art gallery when you don't like the the the, the, the potter the person who made you you therefore will just get thrown away you're a vessel of dishonor and that place where people get thrown away is the eternal lake of fire where the worm dieth not and in that place there was weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity you get thrown away when you don't like your maker do you understand when you don't like your god you get thrown away when you are disquieted or disheveled in your disposition about what your god has done you don't get to stay you don't get to stay so it's naive to think you can ever get to a point where you completely extinguish christianity or christians true ones it'll never happen but the day's gonna come when you get close, the earth will ultimately get to a near-death experience. And that season is called the tribulation. Where they will drain out so much blood out of the earth that it will basically be in dire need of a blood transfusion. And the blood transfusion is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But before then, there will be a whole bunch of exsanguinating vampiric activity on the earth, causing a bleed of God's glory on the earth by replacing the glory of God with that of the devil, the image of the devil in people who have taken the mark of the beast. And everyone that still has God's glory in them will be in flight and they will be charged for beheading. It is a whole exsanguination attempt. It is a whole, like literally, human race assassination attempt. You cannot keep the earth, its creator. It's naive to think you can. It's that basic. So America, I'm sorry, like you're five seconds away 
from being extinguished as a country at large because you're very duplicitous and a lot of people still trust you even though they shouldn't anymore and all of your christians need to snap out of their idolatry of you because one of these days they won't have a, a, a national patriotism over and above their christianity to lash onto they, they they love their country almost as much as they love god they're gonna have to cleanse themselves of that idolatry because their country is leaving it's getting out absent of american repentance do you understand they will not be able to stand firm with Israel. And secondly, they don't stand a chance. They're not going to last. They're not going to just keep on sticking around, exsanguinating certain Christians while letting others live. You don't get to make a decision as to who lives or dies. Last time I checked, that was God's decision. Nobody is going to take me away from God. But just by trying, you're going to cause God to boil. I don't trust the US anymore. I used to. I used to love them. Now I have no regard for them. I cannot for the life of me believe that I'm still sitting on 67 subscribers. I wish I had not seen that, but I guess I had to have seen it in order to even do this message. Even the fact that I can't even check my analytics is problematic. The fact that I have to keep on protecting myself from heartbreak by not checking my analytics because I am aware that America is actively shadow banning the living daylights out of me. That is problematic on its own. The day is going to arrive when the Lord is the one that intervenes on behalf of the church directly because there is nobody coming from us, for us. Nobody coming for us. If you think about the Gog and Magog battle, God himself hooks up a bit of an earthquake that ransacks the enemies of God, flattens them and kills them around Israel. Even though Israel cannot stand up for itself and no one stands up for Israel. The military might in the surrounding nations will be too great for Israel to successfully defend by themselves with their natural weapons. And so God will supernaturally intervene. And another Gog and may God's similarity when it comes to the exsanguination of blood from the earth in the last days is the second coming of Jesus Christ. They will have massacred so many saints that their blood is going to fill up 1,600 stadia, as it is written in, I believe, Revelation 16. Mm. The day is going to come when too many of us are gone for this earth to be recognizable. Its heartbeat will be faint. It will be passing away. It will be dying. And God will be the one to deliver a supernatural blood donation with the second coming. He will massacre the wicked. And that will be the blood donation to the earth that is in dire need of a blood transfusion. He will take out all of those who have taken the mark of the beast. And everybody else that remains, he will make a decision as to who gets to stay and who gets to go. And once they're gone, he will then refuel the planet with us. And we will then run it. He will refuel the earth with Christians and we will then run it. But in the run up too, they will drain us. They will wear us out until we can't speak anymore. He will be given power, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome us. So as overcome as I am right now, you must understand it only evidences how close we are to the second coming of Jesus Christ and how close we are to the exsanguination attempt by the earth of the earth's Christians. How close we are to a global genocide of Jews and Christians until God himself has to step on Mount Olives, on the Mount of Olives, or hook up an earthquake in Israel in order that his people might be rescued. So do not imagine that just because we are outnumbered that we are going to suffer in that state indefinitely. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. If God be for us, who can be against us? No one. So don't look at me all isolated and um, what is this? What's the word that I'm looking for? Um, abandoned? And unable to come up for air with 67 meager subscribers on one of my channels on YouTube and think right now I am beleaguered on all sides just as Jerusalem is a cup of trembling and all who would heave me away will also be cut into pieces the Lord has our back do you understand it's what you must understand that's what's gonna happen so forget about the extinction of Christianity and repent if you don't want to repent then the Lord will get you to a point where the whole planet is suffering from a near-death experience and the only one that can rescue it is him. But this time around, volume 2.0, Karabo is going to be your boss. It's going to be the millennial reign. We're going to be ruling and reigning. And no longer will some wicked people decide that we don't get to grow our channels on social media. No longer will some wicked people insist that we stick under 100 subscribers. No longer will people be make sure that nobody watches our shorts, nobody proliferates our content, that algorithms completely disregard our posts, that we will be entirely privatized on social media with people unable to see our content, albeit having such an important message to speak. 
while at the same time the same people are busy standing in a church claiming to love the Lord praising Jesus our God is able calling yourself a Christian nation and then also serving the needs of Israel during a war I'm sorry you don't get to have those double standards and continue to be favored in the sight of God America I don't even think it's on thin ice I think it's over but we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see